Oh my gosh, I think we're live. Hello everybody and welcome to our first By the Numbers show episodes where we're actually live here in the group. Uh, we just launched the Photography Marketing Mastermind private group a couple weeks ago already. I'm so excited about all of the support you guys have been giving each other. I really wanted this to be a place where we can uh, share what's working, we can hold each other accountable, we can talk privately away from our customers in this awesome uh, Facebook group, um, just supporting each other because being a photographer can be lonely, it can be difficult, it can be confusing. And one of the things, the most excited things I've been re building is to have a live show where I bring on some of the best photographers in our industry to just have a conversation about what's working. And I called it by the numbers because I want it to be really driven by photographers who are still working and who are making mistakes and changing things and adapting to how quickly things change in our landscape and sharing with you guys like boots on the ground what's working. So without further ado, I want to introduce our first guest, Tanya Smith. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yay, that's awesome. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. I'm the first one. Yes, I've recorded a couple other episodes that we have kind of in the can um, that I'll be releasing in the coming weeks. But this one, I'm going to mix it up where some I'm going to go on in on site in people's studios and record them a little bit with with like multiple cameras. But I also uh, it's a little bit easier than and doing this is easier than me driving up to Ontario to interview you. And this this looks and works just as well. Yeah, um, sure. So I'm going to do one quick refresh. How do we look? Um, everything looking OK? Yeah, it looks good. Awesome. We have five people so far hanging out. Um, but one so, of them's me. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, everything's looking like it's coming through great. Uh, well, give us a quick intro. Um, so you are based um in hamilton right where is that at yes it's in ontario it's just west of toronto so it's um it's a city it's not as big as toronto but it's older than toronto um my studio is in an old cotton factory so you might be hearing people walking up above on the floors but that's part of the charm <laughs> um yeah and you so are primarily I'm, a boudoir photographer right yes i mostly do boudoir i'm a woman's portrait photographer so um, I call it the three B's, beauty, boudoir, and branding. So cool. But most boudoir, yeah. We are going to talk uh, with Tanya today about some, real, some of my favorite topics about marketing. I think one of the things she shared with me in the pre-call is that on average, her potential clients are, kind, are, are aware of her business, are kind of hovering, learning more, debating, thinking about it for about how long, Tanya, would you say? Uh, I would say on average about two years. Some women two are longer, um, yeah. but I really don't get people who go, hey, I just found you. I would like to book you. It hardly right. ever happens. Right. Um, such a good insight. And with that in mind, I think it can be scary as photographers just getting started, but it's, it's having that, that faith that you can trust in the process, trust in tactics that you're going to talk about today, that they work. They work time and time again where we build this, they will come mentality. And that's what I wanted to talk about today. So I also have a really fun intro. I'm a huge nerd. We'll see if this works. I'm going to play the intro and we're going to dig in to your process. Okay. Almost worked. All right. I love it. I'm such love a nerd. It. Okay. So Tanya, let's dig in. First thing I want to talk about is your approach to, to I, I think, marketing and pricing and all of this stuff, it kind of interweaves in, in itself. But what are some of the main things that you think it's so important for your potential clients to learn about before they feel comfortable in booking with you? Yeah, I think um, I think this works for any photographer, but mostly it's super important as a boudoir photographer because it's much more intimate than a regular photo shoot. Um, but people have to trust me and they have to be comfortable with me. And a lot of women, um, like nobody wakes up and says, you know what, I really need to book a boudoir photographer. Um, mm -hmm. It's not a need. It's not like wedding. So they don't have to do it. Um, 
it's a guilty thing. They don't want to spend the money. They don't want to take the time. So I have to convince them that this is something that they are going to love. And, you know, here's why, here's all the reasons. Mm -hmm. But also I just have to be out there and be real so that they're like, you know, I can, I can maybe do this. Maybe I can do this with her. She seems not so scary. Yeah. Yeah. When, when you've asked potential or when you asked clients after they've booked, about where they've heard about you, what, how, what, like, what pushed them over the edge? What, what are some of the things that they're sharing? Um, lots of times they get, um, they will talk, talk to me about a post I did. And sometimes it's a post I did years ago, mm -hmm. or, you know, I had someone say, you wrote this and it sounded like you were writing it just to me. You were speaking just to me, which is of course exactly what we want to hear. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's most of the posts that I, it's almost not about photography. You know, someone will say something. I always post about um, margaritas. I used to be a bartender um, and I rock at making drinks. So I post a little thing about margaritas and my different twists on it. And I get people who go, oh, I found this tequila that you would love. And, um, you know, I'll post something about my kid going to school and they'll talk to me about that. So it's it's when you're real that's when they relate to you the most. Yeah. That's so great. I'm so, I, I can't believe we didn't unearth that in the pre-call. I was yeah. a bartender, bar manager for six years. Oh that my is God. so awesome. I love that's it. A great I, job. I learned so, so much of my success in any job I've had since I credit yeah. to the skills I learned behind the bar. Absolutely. You can talk to people, you can talk to anybody. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. It's so great. Yeah. Uh, what is your favorite Let's talk margaritas. I was just in Cancun for spring break mm. with my family. What's your favorite margarita recipe? Oh, the one I do that, that see now in my stories, you would see, I make a, a spicy margarita. So I use, I infuse my tequila with, um, jalapenos. Ooh. So yeah. And sometimes I have one that's super spicy for my husband and then one that's kind of spicy for me, but yeah, it's good. I'll send it to you. It's good. Okay, so you can take. I, I want to go de deeper. So you've got the, okay. the infused tequila. Which tequila? Do you, what's your go-to? Um, well, I use a silver one, um, but if I'm sipping it, which I don't do all the time, I use the Casadores, which I love. Okay. But yeah, margaritas, I use a silver, um, yep. and I just slice the jalapenos down the middle and shove them in the bottle and yep. let it sit for. And they're pretty. They look cool when you do that too. It does actually, but after a little while, the the green goes out, and then they kind of just look gross. But it still okay. tastes. <laughs> All right. And then what do you, what kind, what what mix do you add to that? Grand Marnier, Cointreau, what's the I use triple sec or Cointreau, but I yeah. do love Grand Marnier in it yeah. as well, but it, it's a very distinct flavor, so not everyone's down with that. Yep. Um but then I know make my own simple syrup, which is mm -hmm. totally simple. <laughs> but <laughs> yep. yeah, I make that I, I never use a mix. So real lime juice and simple syrup. I love it. Yeah. Oh, so fun. We could talk about drinks forever. Okay. I know. <laughs> I think it's the he, he, let's bring it back to uh, photography and marketing. One of the, one of the many skills I learned behind the bar is people love a story, and with, whether it's a new tequila or a new bourbon or whatever it is, I found that just reading the paragraph on the back of the bottle yep. would have people in. They just felt part of something. They were like, oh my, they connected with a brand by hearing its story. Right. And just right. telling the story of, of a recipe of how I came up with this or how these different ingredients evolved. Like people connect with those so much more. And now with your boudoir service, you're telling the story and sharing the story of your past clients. So they need to know um, what, what are some of the key things that you want. Um, in a second, we're going to talk about all of the different ways that you communicate and that you think that that people are learning about you and your business and the process and all of these things. What are some of the things first that you think are important that you're communicating? Like, what do you want to make sure in all of these channels, what are you trying to communicate? So me personally, what I'm trying to communicate is that I am just like you and that I don't care what you look like, that every woman is beautiful. That's what I'm trying to get across. Because what most women will say is, oh, I love those photos, but I can never look like that. So my biggest, biggest thing that changed everything for me was posting, I don't like saying before and afters. I call them natural to knock out. Um, cool. Because people think they can't do it. So when yeah. I can show them a picture and I don't try to say, look how awful this person looked and look how great they look, because right. I know some people feel that way about them. Mm -hmm. And I do say this too. I say, I'm not trying to 
show you this. I'm trying to show this is you going to the grocery store and this is mm-hmm. you going out to a gala. So, yes, you can. I think that that one saying, that one phrase is worth the, the price of admission here, guys. Natural to knock out. I've seen that thread happen in, a, in some of the other photography groups of what do we say in our marketing instead of before and after. Um, really, really cool. I think that's a really – it's all about – just the subtle language shift, it has a lot of impact. Yeah, because um, you're not trying to say you look terrible. Now right. I can make you look great. You're not trying to do that. Yep. It's just showing that that – yeah, everybody, everybody has a going to the grocery store look. And when you put some effort, anybody puts a little effort in into dressing up or feeling special. Uh, yeah. We all can look. We, we can express our beauty in our own way. So cool. Okay. Um, now let's talk about channels, marketing channels. So you, what are some of the different ways that people are, are seeing all of this? Of course, you mentioned Facebook. I think we'll yeah. dig deeper into your private Facebook group in a minute, but what are some of the other ways that you're getting people maybe into the group? Um, yeah, so the, yeah, I have that, uh, my main business page, and mm-hmm. then I have the private group. Um, Instagram is growing. I don't have the same numbers as I do on Instagram, but um, I, it's definitely growing, and stories is a huge part of it. Um, and also, I think if you're nervous about getting out there and getting on camera, stories is a great way to do it because it disappears. So there's no yeah. commitment, yeah. right? Um, yeah, so I have that. And um, that's kind of it for me besides my mailing list because yep. I don't want to go everywhere, Twitter and LinkedIn and everything, and, and spread myself too thin. So I concentrate on those two things. Um, that's, yeah, that, that's work for me. What When you use... Um email how are people getting on your list um yeah that that is again another thing that takes a lot of time um i grew my facebook group i had well i had 7300 people in there and then facebook did that organization thing which Mm -hmm. moved every now i'm at 5000 something um but it's good those people weren't interacting so it doesn't it's fine um but I was doing that first and now I'm concentrating on getting those people into my list. So there's all kinds of different things. I'll do giveaways. I'll do, um, one of the biggest things I do is just when they try to join the group, uh, one of the questions is, you know, can we stay in touch by email? And I ask them to leave my email address and almost everybody does. So, yeah, that's cool. So I think one of the things I want to clarify for people is I got stuck with this, even myself and growing Facebook groups, um, is it can be, they cross pollinate. It's not in an order. You can have an offer on your website for like newsletter or a free email education or a free course or something like that. Yeah. And then in the sequence, you can invite people to your Facebook group, yeah. but then you flip it. And in your Facebook group, you also are inviting people to your email list. Is yes. That right? And I use sticky for that. Yes. Because oh, cool. on my, if someone hops into my website, um, there's a separate one, uh, you know, how sticky you can, you can make it go on certain pages. So if anyone looks at something under boudoir, yeah. they're going to get the boudoir pop up that asks them to sign up. And I've done the, the template in there, the seven tips for your boudoir photographer wants you to awesome. know. Cool. Um, so I've done that, but yes, same thing in that, in one of the emails, I added my group. So yes, it, I hope that the people that are in my group are also on my list and vice versa. Yeah, it's so smart because you've got to insulate yourself, right? Like who, right now, private Facebook groups are working. Yeah, they're all, it's always evolving, and we'll t- I think we'll dig into that um, in a second. But you, but the benefit of of email is that you own it, right? You 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 own that list, and you can it's send. Real estate, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So cool. Okay. Um, I got super excited to dig into the content, and I'm realizing I messed up the format. This is my first time. <laughs> doing this i want to kick it off most shows i think a lot of you guys know tanya know how awesome she is so it it kind of skipped past getting to know her a little bit but let's jump into um i've got three quick questions that i'm going to ask every guest so here we go number one tanya we'll come back to uh how you're using your strategies for using for for engaging with um, people in your private facebook group in a second Let's lay the foundation for a sec. We'll go back to building the base and we'll come back up to the third floor. (laughs) So how long have you been in business so far? 
uh, I've been in business for nine years. I started off um, shooting out of my home, out of my master bedroom, actually. Yep. Um, yeah, and I uh, I did that for about two years, and then I got a my studio space, which was smaller than this one. Um, I was there for a few years, and this space I've been in for uh, almost four years now. Cool. Um, and it's has it always been a focus on boudoir? Yeah, it has been actually. And I tried thinking, oh, maybe I should open up to, you know, because I'm getting people asking me to do families and weddings and maybe I should do everything. And that lasted about a month because I do not like weddings at all. And I do not like shooting children. I love children, Mm -hmm. but not to photograph them. It's not my thing. So I realized, you know, what I enjoyed the most doing is boudoir. So I showed more of that and I booked more of that. So that's what I do now. I shoot women all the time. It's no hardly any guys. And um, 95% of that is boudoir. Um, so there's two takeaways. There's, there's, there's a horse uh, kind of one of the axes I like to grind on here a little bit is um, two things I heard you say. The more you focused your marketing, the more effective your marketing got. Yep. That's true. And yes. e- whether or not you want to shoot other types of photography, you're still getting asked to do other types. Oh, I still do. I still yeah. get people saying, yeah, I have an event. Will you come and shoot it? And, yeah. you know, nothing anywhere on anywhere that I put out shows that I do event photography, but you still get people asking. Mm-hmm. And at the beginning, it was hard to say no. This is potential money, right? Right. But um, that's taking away from me marketing what I want to do, and it's taking away from me being available to do what I want to do. So that, that takes a bit. That's a scary thing to do, too, is turn down mm-hmm. other genres, right? Yeah, but you don't think, be known as a specialist unless that's what you're that's known. that's where I'm getting at too. I want to talk about the importance of being a specialist. Is I think that if you at the, at the end of the day, I want everybody to do what they love, and if you love shooting multiple genres, awesome. That's yep. more power to you, right? Um, I think that the more I I really spend a lot of my time kind of studying people like you, Tanya, with the people who have grown. Five, they've been in business for five to ten years. They pay all of their bills with photography. It's just, this is where a lot of people want to get to. And the common trends are they eventually start getting tired of other types. And just for the sake of balance, uh, um, longevity, they they simplify down to just to fewer and fewer and more and more focus and. In, in the, in the more niche, the more expensive, the more business, all of these counterintuitive things start to happen. Um, yeah. So cool. So here's one more point on, we've been talking about this from the very beginning is you wanted, it takes two years sometimes for your potential clients to choose to book you, set another way to choose to trust you. And I think that what happens is when we say, yes, I can do everything, you're making it harder for people to trust you. Because think about hiring anybody to do anything for you. Would you hire your plumber to install like, I don't know, your your drive, yeah, just like those skills, when they start saying things like, oh yeah, yeah, sure, sure, I'll figure it out. Like these little things in the subconsciously start going, hmm, I don't know if this person's trustworthy because there's, I get their enthusiasm. That's fine. But I want to hire an expert, especially when, and, and all of these things transfer to all types of portraits. Yes. With boudoir, you're asking people to be at their most vulnerable and in, in their underwear or naked. That's a big deal. Same thing's true with wedding, newborn. Like those, these are important moments. You're asking people to be vulnerable when they're in front of you in front of the camera. And so Yes. By choosing a specialty, you're showing people that they can trust you. Yes, and I so think cool. to choose a specialty, it's very important for you to shoot everything and try mm-hmm. it and see mm-hmm. what you like because you might like the idea of boudoir or weddings or newborns, but then you try it and you think, you know what, I'm not enjoying this. It isn't, I mean, learning is a hard thing to do, yes, like mm-hmm. trying to see how to do it, but you will quickly learn what you want to shoot and what you don't want to shoot. Totally. Yeah. Um, so good. Okay. So next question, playing with my tech here. Question number two. Oops, I go back here. So you've been in business about nine years. How long have you been full time, real quickly? 
uh, full time, probably um, seven, yeah, about seven years. Um, I was doing it part time, and you know, my kids were young then. So, um, and then it just started getting busy, and I had to make the leap, and I did it with a, a studio. So, so cool. So you've been, so you went full time at the exact same time that you got it, like out of your house. Then you're like, I'm I full. started going, getting full time and booking more, and it, it was such a pain for me with my house because I'd have to pull everything out of my master bedroom and strip the bed and change the sheets and bring in the plants and the props. And it was exhausting. Yeah. So I said, if I have to do this more than once a week, I'm yeah. going to die. So, yeah, <laughs> it's not a necessity. Cool. Yes. Well, congratulations. Okay. That's huge. Okay. okay. So then um, next question number two is how many sessions did you shoot last year in boudoir? Yes. So last year I shot 71 sessions. Now, mm -hmm. I actually took um, a good almost four weeks off um, mm -hmm. in the summer. There was some stuff going on. So, you know, almost a month off, but it has been steadily growing. So before that, um, I think uh, I didn't bring my sheet that I had, but I think I did 56 the year before. Mm -hmm. And then the year before that, I did like 17 or something. Wow. Holy yeah. cow. Look at you grow. That's fantastic. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. So awesome. Okay. And it's just trusting in that growth and... I heard a little like there's as all business owners, like sometimes it's hard to, to honestly look at our numbers. Right. But it's so important that we pause, look at it. And and we when we compare ourselves to our goals, oftentimes we're falling short. But it's important to also look backwards at how far we've come. Mm -hmm. You went from 17 to 30 to 70. That is amazing growth. So cool. Thank you. Um, Oh, very, very cool. Okay. And then um, my the final question that I love talk, asking people is, what is your average client per sale? Oh, yes. So that has grown significantly as well. Um, I'm up to almost 3,600 average sales. So it's yeah. 35, 45. Because if you're saying, asking someone what their average sale is, it's an exact number. You can't say it's between this and this. Average sale is, it will change every time you get a sale, right? Yes. So yeah, I'm just just under 3,600 now, which is which is great. And my goal, when I did my numbers, was to have it at 3,000. So, crushing it, so cool. Well, congratulations there too. We're gonna dig in with that context. We're gonna dig into okay. how you've gotten it to there, um, how you talk about pricing. Um, what what's give us a little bit of history on what your average sale has been over the last couple of years too. Yes. Well, when I uh, my big thing was. Uh, I would think, what would I pay for this? Which is the wrong thing to do, of course. Mm. Um, you have to think of what your client would pay and who your client is. Um, so yeah, I was doing you know, the shoot and burn and look, I got 100 shots and you can have them all and it's only $400 and you know, we all do that. I did that. Um, if I had got a mentor at the beginning, I probably would have skipped that whole time of working mm. pretty much for free. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was low and then I, you know, I raised it a little bit and then I raised it a little bit and I just kept doing bit by bit. But, um, I actually did go see a mentor and she talked to me about, you know, you've got your, your budget hunters here, your shoot and burners, and then you have mm -hmm. your luxury boutique in between, you're going to get a mix of both people. So you're mm -hmm. kind of for nobody in the middle. So if you keep raising it up by 200 and 200, you're still stuck in this middle and you have to decide if you're going to go boutique and luxury and you've got to jump like big jump. Mm. It, it makes you like physically ill to jump that high. But when I did it, it changed everything. So cool. Congratulations there. So one of the challenges when you make that big jump, um, what, any anecdotes, any lessons learned when um, past clients referred people and your prices had been, had made a big jump in the interim? Yeah, actually, that's a really good question. So it depends where you are. Right now, if I had a past client, it would be fine. And I would just explain, you know, my pricing has changed, but, you know, and I'd get them on the phone or a video Skype or person in person. Um, and I would say, you know, look, everything, I have a studio now. Like it's, mm. it's, you can tell that everything's different. Mm -hmm. When I first did the prices, if I got people, I would say, here's my pricing as it is now, but because you were referred by X and she was such a great client, um, I'm going to give you a voucher for whatever, a thousand dollars off. So I'm not saying, okay, you can have my old prices. It is my new prices, 
but I'm right. giving you a discount to kind of make it. Then that was just for me to make it easier for me to do it. Good advice. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And it, it, you can you can choose that number, and there's oh, yeah. flex. Like you're in control. You can empathize. You can show that you care. You can say like, yeah, my price, my costs went up, so I had to raise my prices. I used to be when that client came, these were the scenarios. And now that yeah. this is different. So cool, and it yeah. and it frames it in how your experience, your time, your artwork, your perspective, all of these things are valuable and they continue to get more valuable. Mm-hmm. And you so still get awesome. Who, who leave you, who are yeah. like, you know, that's way too expensive. And that's okay. Cause you're jumped into a whole other category. So that's meant to happen. Um, one of my favorite things I like to talk about there, when you jump into that next you're, you're um, so many places I want to go. I love, I love talking about pricing. Um, no, me too. <laughs> when you jumped from from like that middle to the higher end, what can you say about your stress level <laughs> working with? It's high. Yeah. Margaritas, margaritas are good. <laughs> um, yeah, honestly, it it kept me awake at night. It it was huge, and of course, the inquiries that you got, which because I was in the middle, I got lots of inquiries, and I spent a lot of time in you know talking to people about my prices and they'd be okay. And then, you know, they'd, they'd come back and forth and then it was crickets. So Mm -hmm. you end up not having as many inquiries when you put your starting at. And, um, a lot of people are, you know, thanks bye, you're not for me. So it's hard because you have to find your client. You have to find them. You have to Mm -hmm. put yourself out there and and you will lose people. And it's hard. Mm Mm-hmm. It's, it's really hard at the beginning, but it is game changing. One of the, I mean, I don't know if you want to get into this now, but one of the biggest things was doing my actual numbers like a real business and getting us yeah. cheap and doing my cost of doing business and how much do I want to make or how yep. much do I need to make and how much do I want to work? Do I want to work, you know, all day, every day, not, not taking any time off when you figure that out and you figure out how much you want to make your, your money, your average sale is right in front of you. And mm-hmm. then you can do your pricing based on that. And then it makes it easier to kind of go, it's okay that this person who only wanted to spend a thousand dollars didn't book with me because it's not worth my time. That's, mm-hmm. I need to book it for this amount of money or I don't book. So it does help with that, you know, stress level. Yeah. I think that at the end of the day, it, we've got to be able to talk about our pricing with ultimate confidence Mm -hmm. and there's the whole fake it till you make it idea that i think some works for some people yeah Um, i'm not down with that it's it's getting the that extra kind of kick in the butt from a mentor that's like no yes this is worth it you are worth it this is what if you want to be a profitable business and i think that starting a business is kind of like having a crush on somebody I do this this when I mentor other entrepreneurs who even want to start software companies or and it applies to any business really. Um, the same when we I think back when we were kids and you had a crush on like it's fun to fantasize about that person about what could be right mm-hmm. and we almost here's the funny thing about a crush is what happens when you finally get to know that person like oh my gosh they're such a jerk. They're, they're not, they, right. It was like, it, it, like yeah. the more you get to know them, all of a sudden it, all, the bubble pop, the bubble pursts. Right. And that can happen with a business idea with a, the idea of, of being in a photographer is very, um, aspirational and exciting. And we avoid looking at the details. Sometimes we avoid looking, doing the exercise you just talked about. What is, what's my cost of doing business? How, how many hours am I spending on each and every client? What's my hourly rate? What's my cost of goods sold? These are like the details of actually going up to your crush and having a conversation, right? right. And, and we sub, yeah. And we subconsciously like avoid having this tough conversation with ourselves about where we're at. But when we finally do it, um, I think we just need to be honest, like, okay, this is what I need to be profitable. Um, I'm I'm going to gradually get better at my marketing so I can find these people that can afford this. It's going to be hard, but I'm going to keep doing the systems that I know work because other photographers are using them and they're working um, and then building from there. Yeah. It's not magic. It's numbers. It's, mm-hmm. it's math, right? So um, yeah. And it's nice to kind of 
you know, think that you want to make all this money, but then you have to go step backwards and figure out how you're going to get there. So it makes it easier to turn down the $300 and $500 shoots. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that's where I want to wrap that part up is what, give me an example of the saying no, like how, for every, when you were in that transition phase, for every client you booked, how many people were you, um, were, were saying, no, you're too expensive? Oh gosh, a lot. <laughs> um, I still get a lot. I mean, I still yeah. get a lot of people who um, will inquire and, um, you know, I tell them I have a minimum sale now. So I tell them my minimum sale is $900 and they, they're like, whoa, okay, that's a lot. I mean, how many images do you get with that? And I'm like three. So, um, you know, they'll either say, oh, that's way too expensive for me. Or it depends on how much we've been chatting. I'll ask them, um, what were you thinking of spending? Mm -hmm. Because if they say fifteen hundred, or if they say five hundred or three hundred, then you know it's not going to work. But if they say, "Oh, I was hoping you know to get a decent album for fifteen hundred, and then we can kind of chat because I think they're kind of there. They just mm -hmm. don't get why they want to pay that much money. So if I can talk to them and get them in, mm -hmm. um, but for the people that don't book, and I have to say, and this goes down to patience as well. A lot of photographers, you know, they get annoyed that someone wants to pay only 200 bucks and they want everything. And I don't do that. I just tell them, you know, hopefully one day I'll have you in front of my camera, you know, join, join the group, get in there. There's some great women in there that you can, you can chat with. We talk about lots of things. Um, and I'm telling you, I can't even probably at least four clients a year book for me who have inquired four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was too expensive. And then they kind of follow me along and go, oh, I get it. This would be really fun. I would actually like to pay for this. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, you know, I don't care if somebody is expecting $300 to get 150 images. I still want you in my group. I still want to talk to you. I still want to have you involved in all the conversations because you'll eventually, hopefully, be my client. Right. Or you'll me. Oh, I, when I when I shut up, I love it when when you these nuggets are just so they're so fantastic. It's so much value in that that story. Um, it reminds me of when years back when I launched Sticky Apps was a platform for photographers to sell websites to small business owners. Mm -hmm. And what would happen is a lot of times we all when we're selling anything, we get so excited to get a yes. Yeah. But that that was so bad, especially in technology. And, and I think it applies to this directly too, is when you get a quick yes, sometimes that's dangerous because the reality is there's, there's zero chance that you both are on the same page. Right. And they didn't, <laughs> or they didn't listen or something. Right. You should be get excited about getting inquiries. If people take the step to reach out, that's perfect. That's what you mm -hmm. want. And maybe mm -hmm. you don't get them right now and maybe you don't get them next month, but you might get them next year or the year after. Because so what, when they're saying... I just I was looking just to pay three hundred dollars. In their mind, they're like, well, I just want I just want the images. That's it. I don't, I'm not like they're they're thinking about some maybe some end goal. I want a quick gift for somebody, or a quick, I also want to quick do this because I heard it's fun. It looks cool, but they're the, the there's something attached to why they're only going to spend th or looking to spend three hundred dollars. Yep. And the reality is when they slow down and learn that they're getting so much more from going from you. There's an experience, there's hair and makeup, there's the, the, the whole, there's all these amazing products that are available that they didn't think that they would want. That sometimes it just takes time for them to realize it and then they go, oh, well, yeah, of course that's worth 1500 and up, right? Yep. So powerful. Okay, um, this has been amazing. Um, let's go to... Um, let's go quickly on to Facebook because I said I'd come back to here. Um, so it's changed a bunch, but is it, would you still advise new photographers or anybody to in, in boudoir specifically? I think it's a strategy that's really powerful. Um, would you still recommend it? It um, boudoir it is very powerful. However, mm -hmm. boudoir it is very challenging right now, and I'm not sure if it's going to stick around. But I would definitely get on there and try mm -hmm. it anyway because it. Um, Part of getting clients is networking, and mm -hmm. yes, you do have to go out and you have to be visible. And um, but Facebook is networking. That's mm -hmm. that's you getting to know, and you can pop things super quick. People want to get to know you. Um, now, granted, boudoir photographers are not being shown as much, and I actually I should drop that in the um, 
in the comments. There's a really interesting article about Facebook and Instagram about how they are. You know, we always thought that they were cutting back and showing people our images, and now it's true. They've they've confirmed it. Not mm -hmm. ones that you don't um, that you go against their guidelines. It's ones that are they consider to be not appropriate. So right. um, it it is hard to get out there, but. If you have a group, and even if you start with 10, and mm -hmm. you know three of those people are your mom and your sisters, um, just start and just start talking. Because when people are actually going to book with you, they will go in that group and they will scroll and they will look at the old stuff and they'll get to know you. And it, it'll be slow, but you um, it's a community and you, I really think you should still be on it. Mm -hmm. It's a way to launch things. It's a way to grow your email list. It's There's just a part there's a, a, a podcast I could I'll post in the show in, in the link here when we're done uh, it tells the story about um, they actually interview people who whose job it is to look at the flagged posts all day oh I read that yeah that it's, was it's, heavy it's harrowing like I can't yes they get to look at like the really the worst 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 of humanity and yes. have to look at it all day long some of them suffer from like post-traumatic stress as a result yes um, but the, 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 the that. point that's more relevant to boudoir is it's, it's still super subjective, right? It's still a person whose own perspective, who own, whose own values, whose own mood, when they're looking at thousands of pictures a day yeah. of whether they block it or ban it or whatever, that it's just, it's something that we have, instead of like fighting the things that we can't change, Yes. We need to embrace it for the value that it is. Yeah, and if and we thank go you for free advertising and for free putting you out there with a, a reach that's free, you know. So it's not our it's not our platform, it's not our real estate. Exactly. And there's 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 conversations of starting additional online forums. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long you guys have been around, but there used to be a lot of other forums for photographers. If we just yes. take that one niche and all other w different platforms, they mm -hmm. are falling by the wayside. People are on Facebook. And yes, we can hate it and f be so frustrated or we can say, yes, it's not perfect, but here is a channel that I can get access to my target client for yep. for free. That just yep. really just isn't any other way. And right, if just I, follow the rules, right? Yeah, just... totally. And it's going to be frustrating and we know we need to diversify, right? We need to have other, we need to have email marketing and other strategies in place. But for right now, continue to use this. Um, you said earlier that it was sometimes the posts that aren't even about photography, right? Yeah. That, and so we get so angry that our images are flagged. It, the images you share in your group are the least important types of content, I would argue, yep. that you share in your group. Yep. I mean, I've asked people, I said, hey, I have no kids and no husband tonight. I'm hungry. What should I have for dinner? Something quick. And it went crazy. So, you know, you don't, you don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and also to get around it for boudoir, everyone knows I'm a boudoir photographer in there. You know, I, I even talk about sometimes, I can't show you some of these beautiful pictures, so hop on over to the blog so that, because Facebook won't let you, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. But um, before and afters are huge in that group, huge. Yep. Yeah. And editing styles, you know, do you like these, this in black and white or this editing style? And ask them. People love giving their opinions, right? Oh, so you just gave me a great uh, analogy. I'm such an analogy nerd. So this is what I think it's like. Is it's a it's a um, all technology is just emulating the successful stuff. Is just emulating things we used to do as humans for thousands of years, right? Mm -hmm. So when you if you were to meet a potential client at a networking event or for coffee or for somewhere out in public. You wouldn't be showing these images anyway, right? Yeah, so treat exactly. treat Facebook, even the private Facebook group, like a super like a intimate place where we can talk. But, but but you're still in public, right? We're still online, so yeah. it doesn't have to be very much of your imagery. And the idea is, you want people to get off of Facebook and come to your website to come to look at sticky albums, to come look at your landing, whatever it is. And you said you framed it perfectly. Where you say, hey, I I can't post these here. So come check them out over. You want to see more examples of my work. And one yeah. idea you also shared with me is you've done Facebook lives of the session of the, the prep. Talk me through that strategy. Oh, yes. So, ju well, just um, on, on Instagram live and Facebook live, um, I can still, you know, I do lots in the group about uh, frequently asked questions 
you know, which is literally me doing a live like I would do a consult with a client. So talking mm -hmm. about what it's going to be like to get them excited and all that kind of stuff. Um, obviously, boudoir, I can't film the shoot. Um, but everybody is wondering what it's like and what, you know, can I do this? Is this, is this something I can do? So um, I gave away a shoot uh, in the group. Okay. And I said it like it was literally it was hair and makeup and it was I think I gave her 10 images. So the value for me was, you know, twenty three hundred dollars. And I put yep. that in there, too. Yep. Um, and I can't that was when we could actually grow big, when you could actually get them to add friends. Mm -hmm. But you can still get them to invite friends for mm -hmm. this. Yep. Make sure, you know, sign up for my mailing list. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, blah, 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 whatever your rules are. Here's, um, I'm gonna I'll, I'm gonna pause yeah. here because I, I I'm launching my own uh, giveaway here in a minute, um, and I was struggling with that same detail. Is the thing with Facebook is you can't make doing a thing with Facebook mm -hmm. the mechanism for entering. No, so you it's can't. It, it, but that's what we we want people to do that. But here's what I recommend: is use any any giveaway tool out there. We just flip it, kind of like we did. We talked about earlier with email. Is have yeah. the whole giveaway be about they just subscribe to they opt in with their email address because you need their email to contact the winner it's just right. that and then in the follow-up email after they've confirmed their entrance to the contest to the giveaway invite them to the group and right. you can invite them several times so talk yep. about you hey we're the sequence, right you can do an email sequence yeah. with sticky and just have them keep getting it and don't forget about the contest and share it with mm -hmm. your friends. You can say whatever you want in your email list, yep. right? So it just has to be yep. one step removed, but it's still just as powerful. And that way you have both the email address and eventually you'll get them into your group. So cool. Okay. So now you've got, you, you had the giveaway and then what? Yes. So, um, so that was a lot of action and people were going crazy because they realized this is a lot of money and I get a free shoot. Mm -hmm. Um, part of the thing they had to agree with if they won was, you know, I shoot Monday to Friday, you have to be available on one of, you know, these three days, whatever days they can choose. But the biggest thing was, is you have to be okay with having it filmed mm -hmm. from start to finish. Bingo. So, and of course I wouldn't do any nudes. I wouldn't yeah. film those or anything, but yeah. it's a boudoir shoot and I want to film this. Yeah. So, um, the lady I got, um, and it was a, it was a legit draw, you know, with the King Sumo. And, um, so it was a real thing. Nobody would complain that I picked the person. Um, and she, she told me herself, she could never afford to pay for this. Mm. Um, and, uh, so we filmed the whole thing. And I mean, when I say film the whole thing, if I had her in a very suggestive pose, I didn't film that. Yep. Um, you know, but I filmed me talking to her, her laughing, this feels silly, all that kind of stuff. And then, um, I would show the back of the camera sometimes. And then I would say to her, Hey, do this. Let me yep. take a picture. Now do this with my pose, you know, chin forward and down. Mm -hmm. And I showed it back and forth on the camera. People went crazy for it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, you know, I didn't get bookings right away. I got yep. a lot of interaction. Then I edited the photos almost right away and posted them. Mm -hmm. Um, I did the whole thing. I did her reveal. So I could have just sent her the images and said, here's your images. Thanks for, you know, doing this. But I had her come in and look at the photos and I filmed that and they were looking through and people would say, oh, no, take this one. This one looks great. And, you know, it was amazing. So I don't know how many posts I got out of that. The how did you film the reveal? How did you do that? You had, you, you had her come back in? I put my, my phone on my tripod behind me because okay. I do it on the computer. Yep. And we just, you know, they were up on the screen. So. People were scrolling and then I'd pick up the, the phone and I'd be like, okay, you guys, which one? Um, so yeah, it was, do you, it was, do you have them? Was it a separate, was it the same day or did you have the, was it, did you kind of come back on a different day? I had two cam, uh, two phones. I'm talking about the reveal. So the reveal after you've edited and stuff like that. So you, you, you filmed the shoot itself. Yes. Then when did they? When did she come back for the reveal? Oh, it was a week later. I think okay, it was a got week. It. So I could talk that up in the group and say, yeah, "Hey, yeah. don't forget, tune in on this time because it's going to be Jen's reveal." And got it. You know, all that <sighs> so kind of smart. Stuff. So we should, we've great. got to talk about how we can take your. We should you and I should do like a training together on how you can use that strategy with um, with a sticky folio landing page to manage an email a sticky maybe just a sticky email page to manage the giveaway, to build like the giveaway entry page and how you'd administrate it all. And then how you use the tool I'm using right now is called Ecamm Live. So yeah. you could set up, 
for anybody who has an, a, an extra DSLR with a wide angle, you could set up with just a USB into your computer going live on a nice camera like this. And with a wide angle, I think it gives you some room to not, to not have it be t too suggestive and you just be careful where the camera's pointed and all of that, where you're, yes. you're, you're broadcasting really great HD video of that experience yes. live to your audience. That's amazing. And I would do little things like I would literally put my hand up in front of the camera if yeah. she was coming out and she's like, you know, kind of like this. And I would put my hand in front of the camera and people so would be like, move your hand. We want to see, you know, it was it was, it was funny. We had a good time. Um, so great. So, yeah. So she was nervous and we didn't start with boudoir. But the biggest thing is, was it went on for weeks because it was, you know, giving it away. So it was all active. And then it was the shoot and then it was the reveal. And then I posted the final images. So um, now that was gosh, when I started the Facebook group, honestly, so it was probably three years ago. And I still get people who said, I saw Jen's photo shoot, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I want to do this. And I yeah. still get, them, and it still comes through. So I'm actually probably due to do another one as well. So maybe we can sort of incorporate I myself would, in that. I love it. It's so smart. I, mean, I always say to people, you have to show what you sell. And yep. it's the ex when you can show the experience, when you, like think about buying anything big like this. Like we don't buy a house without walking around in the house first. We don't buy a car without yeah. test driving it. Like people want to see you do what you yeah. do. It instills a tremendous amount of trust. And yeah. even if we don't, even if you don't want to do it live to set up a, a, your phone on a tripod and yeah. film, film your session so that you could have a time lapse of a session just in some kind of marketing video you have could just, yes, People just seeing you do it with one other person, like check the box. Yes, this person actually is a photographer and actually has other clients, right? Yeah, that and not only that, I think it really helps for a woman to go, oh, that's all? I can do that. Yeah, totally. Like, oh, it doesn't look that hard. Oh, and she does coach you, you know, everything. And, and you know, this woman isn't a size two in a, with a model body. And look how great she looks. So mm -hmm. I think as soon as they can become relatable, it just makes everything click. So powerful. Okay, this has been amazing. Um, let's let's last thing we'll talk about um, are some pricing tips, and we, we can only cover so much. And there's a really awesome resource you've got going to make available to people to dig deeper. Um, so let's. A lot of this has been leading up to all of the time, all of the effort of of getting an inquiry, and even still, while they're kind of sitting by the wayside, they finally ask, "Okay, how much did this cost?" We know that they're asking that because they just don't know what else to say. They're actually asking a lot more. Um, yeah, they're inquiring. So the only thing they know how to ask is how much does this cost? Because mm -hmm. what else would they ask mm -hmm. until we tell them, right? Totally. So, so, so then how do, you, how do you apply? What's your process there? Yeah, so almost always I get, hi, I'm looking to do a boudoir session. You know, how much is this going to cost? And I say right away, um, Oh my God, that's great. I love that you're thinking about doing this or congratulations on your upcoming wedding or something. I don't just go send me your email, but mm -hmm. I want their email. So I'll either send them a link to fill out a form or, um, I'll get their email address and I have, um, an email that I send, which is not a, here you go. Here's what you need to do next. I, I talk a little bit. Oh, congratulations. This is going to be a great experience for you. I've never had a woman who hasn't been happy with her images. Um, and then I say, um, that I'm different than most photographers that you've maybe had experience with because I want to get to know you a little bit first to make sure we're getting the images that you're going to love. So mm -hmm. I'd love for you to click here to arrange a phone call or click here to arrange an in-person consultation. Mm -hmm. um, but then I also, because they asked me a question, so I'm not going to not answer it. Um, I also say, here's what your experience includes. And I have, you know, hair and makeup, full posing, use of my studio wardrobe, um, a new sense of self-worth and confidence with a little wink. Um, and, uh, and then I say some women will spend $900. Some women spend $6,000 or more. Um, most women will spend somewhere in between. And that's how I approach pricing first. So cool. So I don't, and I don't do the, you don't have to buy anything if you don't love it. Just come in and shoot because I tried doing that before. And what happened is women did love it and they did love their photos. And then I had a heart attack when they saw the prices. So mm -hmm. you have to give them a range. Yep. Um, and I follow up with them. If I don't hear from them, I follow up two more times and then I call it a dead lead. Yep. Um, 
but yeah, I hope most women will book a phone call. It's not that intimidating. And, um, and then we just chat and, yeah. and honestly just talk before we even get into pricing. What kind of questions do you ask to drive that, that first conversation? Oh, so it's, yeah, it, it takes some practice and it's, it's nervous, but honestly, the more you do it, the easier it is. Yep. Um, so I just say, Hey, thanks for inquiring. And then I ask them, so what, what made you think about doing this? What made you reach out? You know, and they'll tell me their reasons. They just lost weight. They saw my photos. They read a post. They are getting married, whatever the reason is. And then you can talk about that mm -hmm. um, for a bit. And if they're not talking very much, you know, ask them, do they work? Where do they work? Are they married? Do they have kids? Have you ever done a shoot like this before? There's lots of questions to kind of get them talking. Mm -hmm. um, and then you just become relatable to them, right? Just talk about where they are. Mm -hmm. um, and don't talk about, oh, you know, yeah, having kids. And if you don't have any, don't do that. Don't do, don't be fake real. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if you can just chat with them and when people talk, they, people love talking about themselves and just be quiet and let them talk. Um, so then I'll say, well, if you don't mind, I'm going to talk a little bit about what the experience will be like now that I know what you're looking for. Um, and then I tell them, pause there, pause, the, I want to like okay. hit the rewind. <laughs> that is a, a gold sentence. So it's a great transition where you say, if you don't mind, I'm going to talk a little bit about what the experience is, what it would be like. <sighs> wow. So good. Okay. That's, and I, they I, say, okay, yeah, great. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause you asked them and they gave you permission. So then I tell based, them, but there was some they, other good nugget you said based on Based on what, now oh. that I know what you're looking for, now I know a little bit more about you. Yes, that's so. what I say too. So, so it sounds like the experience that I'm telling is is geared towards them, which it is because mm -hmm. I don't, uh, you know, I don't want to talk about um, nudes. Maybe if they said, "Oh, I really don't want," you know, whatever they've talked to me about, I I customize the experience I'm going to tell them based on them because I've listened mm -hmm. to them. Um, so yeah, little things and, and, you know, we talk about hair and makeup and I talk about lashes and, you know, it's, you sit in the chair and it's, we have music on, you know, it's kind of fun. And I tell them about the studio and it's beautiful and you can come and see, you know, some wardrobe stuff. But I tell them that I, we want, we need to plan it out because it's like a magazine style photo shoot. Uh -huh. So they understand just by my words and the way I'm saying it, that this is a luxury experience. Yeah. Um, you know, and I tell them I guide them the whole step of the way. And yes, you're totally going to be nervous. Um, but, you know, you're working hard and we laugh and we talk about, you know, oh, it's, you're going to feel so silly in the poses. And it's just a conversation. It's not really a sales pitch. Mm -hmm. So what I want is, oh, that's amazing. Or I'm so excited. That's what I want to hear. Mm -hmm. um, and there and, you know, so we d said that and I said, OK, let's set up a time for you to come in and see the studio. There's no obligation I just want to make sure we're a good fit because even then I'm telling them, you still don't have to book with me. Let's see if we're a good fit. Um, and then usually by them, if they've come in they're they're done. But we do on the phone. I do talk about the range as well. Um, yep. I go into a tiny bit more detail than I did in the email for pricing. Yep. Um, so I do tell them $900. I say, it's only going to get you three images. It's the most expensive way to buy images from me. So I have packages set up so that the more you buy, the less it is per image. And they so range cool. from here to here. So that's, there's, there's a lot more details you share in your free guide that you, people are going to get access to in a minute. There's one more teaser that I love. I haven't heard this model before where you, you, you keep it simple because I think however people do it, they need to be able to explain it simply, right? And yes. what you found that works for you is you simply sell by the image. So let me hear you explain your tiers and what that includes and why you do it that oh, way. Okay, sure. So I'll explain it to you like you're a client. Perfect. Um, and what I say, so it's kind of my script. Yep. Um, so what I say to them, like I said, is 900 is your minimum uh, purchase. And that's going to get you three images, which you could totally do. But it's the most expensive way to buy images. So I'm going to show you 25 to 35 of your very best images fully edited and you're going to love them all. And then I kind of go, even if you think you won't, even if you're hoping you're only going to get five that you love, you're going to love your images. Um, so then I say, so my packages are set up so that the more you buy, the less it is per image, mm -hmm. the collections. And then I pull it up on the screen with them um, when they're at the consult, um, packages start at 1490, they go all the way up to $4,200 or more. And most women will spend somewhere in between. So, um, 
And then I can, then I pause and let it sink in because, you know, they're like, oh my God, that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they go, 1490 is doable. 4200 is way too much. This is what they're doing now before they do the shoot. And then I say most women, which is key to say most people, most women um, will spend somewhere in between around two or $3,000. Does that sound like something that will work for you? And then I wait. So they kind of go, yeah, that's good. Or they'll say, uh, it's kind of a lot more than I thought. Mm -hmm. So then I go, okay, yeah, fair enough. It's definitely a, you know, a luxury experience. It's an investment for sure. Um, how much were you thinking that you were going to spend? And then we can work from there. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, but how I work my, my pricing. So let's say they buy 20 images, which is the middle package, which is 2990, which yep. is my goal. My sales that I want to make is the middle package. That's what I want to sell. Mm -hmm. Um, 2990. So, um, so I always talk about that one. It's right in the middle. Mm -hmm. I always point it to them. I always show them when I, when they're in person, I show them the album that gets them 20. I'm always talking about that one cause I'm pushing them to that one. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you purchase 20 images for 2990, you can have them in any format you want. You can have them in an album or in a folio box or digitally. So mm -hmm. they can, they can choose how they Good want choice. it. It's simple. Yep. It's not confusing. Um, because what, what does Sue Bryce say? A confused mind says no, right? Mm -hmm. They're just like, I don't understand any of this. I might get ripped off. I, I don't want to do it. Right. So it's just super simple. Yep. I love it. And then what you're able to do is most people want an album or a folio box. <clears throat> and then they're like, but, but I also want the digitals. And then so then you can use the digitals and also the, the, the custom sticky album as a value add or as a pull through. Right. So what I say is, so most women who do boudoir will want uh, an album, right? So they want them printed. And they say, well, I would also like the digital copies. So then I show them my other list, my add-ons, um, which is, you know, these are my most popular add-ons. And at the top is the sticky album and then digital images. So I have a price for both of those. Mm -hmm. So there's a value. The sticky album, if they want it, is 395 and the digital copies, in addition to the album, is 690 However, I almost always give them both. Um, yep. You know, uh, surprise and delight, right? Yep. So I almost always do that, and I put it on their invoice, digital copies of purchased images, 690 my gift to you. And I put it on there so they see it. Um, but they almost always get it. Because mm -hmm. one, I want them to have the app in their hand on their phone to show people. Because if they only have an album, no one's going to see it unless they come to their house. Yeah. Um, and the same thing with the digitals. I want them to post them. I want them to, to and then show you can them. use it. So, so uh, you know, you're doing that kind of as a marketing yes. satisfaction at the end. Awesome. But also during the sales session, if somebody's on the fence, yeah. How do if you handle that? Between so. Uh, so I have, t uh, seven, 14, 20 and 27. So if they're like, you know, when we sit down for the reveal, I show them their images. Oh my gosh, I love them. They're all great. And then I go, okay, so what package are you looking at? Because if you want them all, it's this much money and they go, oh, I can't do that. I definitely need to go to 20 images. And I go, okay, that means you have to get rid of, you know, 18 images. Let's start doing that. Let's see how we can do it. And hopefully they have a hard time doing it, which mm -hmm. they usually do. Yep. And then they him and Han, they go, okay, maybe I'll go to the 27. I go, okay, mm -hmm. let's get rid of this many images. It's math. I'm anyway, yeah, however many I, it's perfect. I'm, I'm tracking. Yep. So then, um, and then they're going, uh, and then their logical, um, start brain starts working and they're thinking, do I really need this many? Maybe I should drop down to this. So when I see that happening, um, I will tell them, you know what? I would hate to see you get rid of all these images. Yep. Um, how about you get whatever one they were hovering back and forth with? How about if you get those 27 images, I'll include the, um, the personalized smartphone app, the mm -hmm. sticky, and the digital, and that'll be my gift to you. And then that way you don't have to get rid of those additional seven because I know how much you love them. And right. usually that's the push, right? Yep. Because they were, they were already kind of reserving in the back of their mind while they're trying to pick a package. They're all also going, well, they're, they're trying to do the math of, well, crap, that's going to put me at three grand. And I'm also going to want the digitals for six. Right. That's going to put me at 36. Oh, wait, if I go to three, you're going to just throw that in? Okay, perfect. Yep. I just saved them, you know, almost twelve hundred dollars. I just yeah. gave them a twelve hundred dollar gift, but I want them to have that gift. So yeah, I use it as a mm -hmm. sales sales tactic for sure. So um, powerful to make them make the decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, this has been like a masterclass. I love how much we got into the numbers. I'm bad at public math, also, but you yeah. really helped kick off this episode with some amazing detailed data. 
This has been phenomenal. If people want to learn more, I'm going to grab the link while you talk about what they're going to get if they go check out your, your website, your oh, resource here. Yes, yes, for sure. I mean, I do, I do mentoring for um, other photographers. And I talk, one thing I don't teach you is um, technical photography because you're probably better at that than I am. Um, but I do teach you um, sales and numbers and in-person sales and the psychology behind selling and what people are feeling and how to get through that, as well as um, posing boudoir which is a huge huge part of boudoir yeah. um so i do that i do live workshops and stuff so the information there i don't know if you're putting that one up yeah i did the the sales the sales tip so if they want to learn oh. more about your sales process they go there they opt yes. into your list and what are you going to give them in exchange okay so that one is actually how i ran my um studio sale the last one that i ran it was a, a promo um and uh i charge so my session fee is 295 dollars, and i was charging 99 dollars for the session fee um and I have made, oh gosh, I don't have the exact number, seventy over $76,000 just from that sale alone. Um, and this, uh, the link, the sales tips, that's exactly how I ran it. So cool. I didn't give anything away mm -hmm. except I discounted the session fee. So it's, um, and one of the things, the other bonuses I gave was a sticky app and the digital copies, which if you remember is exactly what I give people anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just how I stage that and how I put that together and the technical parts of how um, they ran through the links and how to buy it and that kind of stuff and my script. So that's all in um, under sales tips. Yeah. Wow, that's so cool. And what you can we'll post another link if you guys want to learn more about mentorship okay. and other things. You stay stay in touch with Tanya. This has been phenomenal. Um, if anybody is watching on the replay, um, continue to ask questions. Tanya, you can see, is in this group also. Please ask ask away. Um, I think the one question we haven't ans asked answered yet is, um, do you edit your own photos? Do you do all your own editing still? Oh, um, actually, no. I used to. Mm -hmm. um, I do to a point. I'm a bit of a control freak, and I think most of us are um, with our art. So um, I always used to up until... Um, last August, I hired an assistant who also does my editing. Cool. So I cull my images because I don't, I don't think I'll ever want anyone to cull my Ill images. Yeah. So I call them, I get them down to, uh, you know, 35 to 40. Um, and she does the editing, you know, the blemishes and skin whitening and all that kind of stuff. And then I finish them. So I will put my, um, the presets that I have and stuff on there to give it my look. Cool. But, um, yeah, no, I don't edit my own photos. And someone said you had me at Margarita, so oh, Brenda, <laughs> Brenda Bailey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. So cool. Um, I love hearing that story. I think that's the beauty about our industry is that you get to decide what you want to do. There's parts of that process that you you enjoy doing. You know you can't do it all, otherwise it limits how big your business can get. You've got to outsource some of it, so you you've given away the parts that – it, it reminds me of the like Marie Kondo craze right now. It's like anything in your business that doesn't spark joy, yeah. like, take it out and give it to somebody else. And if you still stop enjoy doing it or, or get someone else to do it. Right. Yeah. And I had another conversation with somebody. They hate calling. So they outsource the calling part. Right. And it's just yeah. whatever works for, for your preference. What and, and I think I'll end with this as we continue to bring on more guests on the show. The reason why I want to bring in a larger variety of photographers is that there are common threads, common truths, and common denominators and, and tactics that, that I think you're going to hear over and over and over again. But we also, I want people to hear that there is not a single right way. Like there's the tactic, but then you execute the tactic with your own personality, with your own style. Uh, because... What bums me out the, so much about a lot of private f Facebook groups for photographers is this, what's the right one thing? Like, what's the right app for this? What's, what's the, the perfect lens for this? Yeah, then? exactly. Yeah. There just isn't. And I think that we, yeah. So this has been a blast. Thank you so much for just diving in off the, in the deep end and making this one of an amazing first episode, Tanya. You're, hey. you're awesome. Um, I, Probably going to have to have you on again. We'll talk more about other stuff, but this has been fantastic. Awesome. Thanks, Nate. You bet. Have a good rest of your day. I'm going um, to play the outro music because I think it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Have an awesome rest of your day, and we will see you in the next episode. Cheers.